Welcome back. Over 30.8 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in the higher education sector. This includes the post-schooling education and training sector, which is playing a major part in making vaccination appealing and accessible to the 2.5 million youth who have recently become eligible. We speak now to Professor, uh, Professor Ramnik Aluwalia, higher education health CEO. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So your thoughts on these figures and also this, of course, against the backdrop of the youth population in South Africa. Thanks, Sipi. So, uh, Sipi, so in fact, uh, if you really ask us, uh, what is the, the next trajectory of the COVID-19 pandemic or what's going to decide for Africa and South Africa is the youth? Uh, because we are a youth country and predominantly uh, we've clearly seen that the young people actually are, the new variants have shown high affinity to young people. Young people can actually carry the virus and the virus as the variants become highly transmissible and the virus keeps moving from one body to the other, the chances of it mutating is extremely high because as it moves from one body to the other, it finds a body where it can sit and hide and mutate. And, and, and these variants and mutations are quite seriously uh, very concerning for us as a continent or a country or the global sphere. Um, and, and, and we can tell you what the variants are up to with the Delta. And now we are looking at new variants of concerns that have actually been uh, around us. So young people play a very significant role. So now opening vaccination, which we are now in, into two to the third week now uh, among young people, are very significant chapter which will decide the, the future of South Africa, the future of the trajectory of this pandemic in our, among us. And if we can get young people vaccinated and the way we are moving, uh, the numbers look promising, but we are still encountering vaccine hesitancy. And we're totally mindful that people are taking, uh, young people are making time right now to find mm -hmm. time to make their so point. And, I want to understand from the, the studies or the data available to you, are you aware of any particular reason, especially within this cohort, why there's vaccine hesitancy? And are vaccine um, hesitancy incentives, or rather vaccine incentives, being used effectively? The, uh, you must remember the young people are healthy, are strong. Uh, and when they are strong and healthy, we also know that when COVID-19 affects them, most of the time COVID-19 is asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic in young people. Uh, but it's now with the changing virus mutation and variants, we have seen fatalities as well as young people getting into severe infections, specifically the ones which are not vaccinated. Uh, and, and the new variants are now showing affinity and, and giving us that it is penetrating the young people also. But predominantly young people compared to old people or middle-aged people with comorbidities are less uh, at risk to fatality. And there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer influence. And, and when anti-vaxxers or people who, uh, through social media platforms, and when they, they find information that, well, vaccines are, 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 are um, systems of, of of some kind of a 5G or some kind of, which is absolutely not true, and they get influenced with it. And to counter it, we need the support of media. We need our peer-to-peer -peer educators, our young people to promote vaccination. When they go to vaccinate and they share their uh, vaccine story with others, and the, the reality of data from of how Krudiskia Hospital or Steve Biko Hospital is declaring results on a daily basis, of people who compared to the number of people who are in ICU beds or who are dying are actually people who are not vaccinated versus the, the just one person of the people who are actually are vaccinated okay. go to a Infection. Professor, before we run out of time, we are seeing now, you speak about data, we are seeing now that children, uh, trials for vaccinating children have started in South Africa. What are we learning from international best experience with these trials and how is that going to work for us as a nation to convince uh, more and more people to go and vaccinate? So I think it's still early stages. Uh, let me be uh, let me be very honest in this regard. Um, um, the we have for say measles uh, for 
polio, uh, for BCGs. When children are born, as soon as they are born out of the mother's womb, they get their first doses and they get the immunization. So vaccines have been predominantly deployed for young people or children to get that immune response very early stages in order to combat pandemics. Now, these are the trials that are now doing or undergoing all over the world, whether you're talking in US, Germany or South Africa, which is to test uh, vaccines efficiencies in young people or children. Uh, young people is there above 18, but below 18 and specifically children. And I think that's very critical because if we can find efficacies of vaccine at that age group, we can build immunity among kids who have very high transmissible rate because as these variants are, are mutating, they're showing affinity to younger and younger populations which will clearly give us indication that if we can immunize people at that early age, we can stop the spread of the virus through prevention by vaccination very quickly at that age. Households where children school, because children congregate in schools very quickly, and, the, and we've seen with influenza, with flu, the virus spreads very quickly. So to break that chain, these uh, trials are very, very essential for us, and we are marking the space to see how these vaccines will be efficacy or their efficacy proven. Okay, so considering that companies are looking at mandatory vaccination to overcome anti-vaccine sentiment and hesitancy, should there be this kind of approach at a country level? Obviously, we are very much aware of people's human rights, individual rights to choose, but... Will we ever get to that stage? As you mentioned, there could be a fourth wave. There could be many more. And, and the continuing uh, mutation of the virus itself. So I think uh, the discussion is quite, uh, quite uh, happening around whether we should make vaccines mandatory in workspaces and occupational health risk that the COVID imposes due to its, the way it transmits so quickly. Um, but I still think that South Africa is in a very early stage to discuss such issues. We're just two weeks or, or two and a half weeks from since the vaccines have been um, opened up for younger age group below 35 or 18 to 35. Um, and, and, and I think, um, it, to be very honest, at this stage, our focus has to be uh, promoting vaccines, communicating vaccines, fighting vaccine hesitancies, uh, encouraging people, young people to vaccinate and giving access to people to get vaccinated because uh, it's not easy. And I can tell you as, even I'm a medical professional, but as a human, it's tough for when you have needles, you have health things, it takes time for people to right. make their decisions. Respect that at the stage. So I think it's to early stages, but there will be a time when we should have deeper discussions, but it's not at this stage. It's just two and a half weeks since we've opened up. Thank you so much for your time. Professor Ramnik Aluwalia, Higher Health CEO, much appreciated. It's time now to take a look at your weather projections for the weekend.